So in this video, I wanted to go over the steps that I took to create a honey pot using a Raspberry Pi 3, and how I was able to do this using the TrustFoundry.net website and the resources that they provide for the honey pie, uh, which is what they're calling the Raspberry Pi-based honey pot, um, and how I was able to actually get this thing fully set up and what the goals were for this project, how I plan to use it, and all the different things that I want to do with it and how I can improve upon it in the future. So, first thing that I did was I ended up going to the this uh, Trust Foundry website and on here they have the Honey Pie an easy honeypot for Raspberry Pi. Now this is a cool uh, download ID or link that they give you as a resource because what it is doing is it's combining the Raspbian OS which is a Debian based Linux operating system that can be put on the Raspberry Pi 3 and it's gonna use that and combine a simple port scan uh, detector and uh, use a Python script to make it so that based on the whether the honeypot is going to be scanned it will give off a different uh, alert so uh, the cool thing about this is that it is very lightweight it's very simple and the website actually gives you a nice installer that will take you through a simple IDE that will walk you through how to set it up and whatnot uh, so for the actual port scan detector we have this honey pie, uh this uh, honey pie uh, github page and this has all of the actual code that's going to be needed to have a software on the raspberry pi that will detect whether it is being pinged, scanned, telnet connections are being made, ssh, stuff like that um, so all of this is going to be done through uh, through this code and then we're going to have a python script which is linked to this through using their download uh, zip file and that is what's actually going to allow you to get an email or allow you to put in a link to where you can write your own python script or other type of script that can run a different method of alert for yourself so for my project what I wanted to do was be able to get an alert if my Raspberry Pi was getting pinged or trying to if someone was trying to break into it but I also wanted to capture their IP address on the local network and be able to block them on all ports and basically like ban their IP from uh, the Raspberry Pi and then maybe in the future be able to go and take that from the actual network standpoint and kick the connected device off of the actual network. So uh, if we're going to jump over here, we're going to jump over to our Raspberry Pi and I'll walk you through what I did. Okay, so we are on our Raspberry Pi now and what I have up here is the Honey Pie website uh, that is through the Trust Foundry. And uh, on this website, uh, which we had up earlier, we're just going to go and walk you through all the steps that you have to do to get this fully set up. And I'm going to talk to you about some of the stuff that it like uses and how it works. So <clears throat> I'm going to click on this GitHub link. And this is the link that is connected to the actual GitHub page, which has uh, all of the different resources that will allow this honeypot to work. And where this is this uh, zip file is going to connect that with uh, a uh, Python script and uh, some other materials so they can all work together. So right here I've clicked on the zip file that downloaded and we just extracted it. So it was going to be extracted into the temp folder and now what we're going to do is we're going to actually pull up a terminal and we're going to navigate to that folder. So. Uh, we're going to pull up our terminal. I have two terminals open, so I'm just going to close one, open up the other one, and first we're going to just do a, a simple like directory change. So we're going to navigate into the temp folder. And 
from the temp folder we should be able to find the uh, the materials that we are looking for so right now we are going to CD into the honey pie master folder which is if you remember on the website that that is uh, one of the first steps you see it's after unzipping the master zip you got to navigate into the honey pie master folder and then we need to ch mod it so that's what our, we're going to do next we're going to open our terminal back up and we're going to type in chmod plus x space asterisk dot sh oh and it looks like wait what did I mess up oh I didn't put a space I don't think yep okay it worked uh, and then now we are going to need to sudo uh, the actual honey pie uh, installer which is what's going to download uh, or it's going to run the graphical uh, <coughs> prompt that will allow you to set up some of the more basic things with this and if you really just like starting with it that's how it's going to uh, allow you to easily get a raspberry pi honey pot working and uh, I would recommend that that's what you do if you're just using this for home use and you don't actually plan to do anything else with it. Um, but that is how we're first going to initialize the installation process and how we're going to change the IP tables and whatnot on here. Um, so, here, let's. What am I messing up? Oh, whoops. I, uh,. Oh, I didn't type honey pie right. Okay, so we are going to sudo the executable file, and it's going to give us this prompt here saying, "Are you okay with this changing uh, some of your IP tables and whatnot?" Uh, it's going to ask you for a couple settings. Just go through and do what's true for you. Um, uh, now it asks me uh, if my computer is. Uh, default if I want to change my password so I hit no uh, and then it's going to ask you if, what you want to name your device so you want to name it something that will get ha hackers trying to attack it uh, along with the vulnerable ports they're going to want to look at this name and it, it might help entice them to break into it so I named mine uh, ring doorbell camera because I think that that would be something that some hacker might want to try and break in to get your cameras. So after that finishes loading and changes, it's going to give you this prompt, and this is how it's going to set up your notification system. So the first one's the email, send email, and that's what I'd recommend if you're just going to use this basically uh, for the way it comes out of the box, because uh, it's an easy way to get a notification about someone breaking in, and it's a lot easier to use and manage than some of the other ones where like uh, you'd have to write a script or something like that and that does take a little bit of setup but it's not too bad uh, the one that I went ahead and chose was the blinking LED and the reason I chose that was because the blinking LED is going to let us uh, it's gonna let us have uh, our script inside that blinking LED file so that everything will work together so something that we could do to add on to this project or if you wanted to go a little farther and actually do something more than just getting an email alert is to actually create a Python script so that you can actually take the IP of the person trying to connect to your Raspberry Pi and just block that IP through the Raspberry Pi IP tables. So this is what I wanted to do with my project initially and this is just a simple way to do it is here I have this website and it's just got a simple command to take uh, any IP that's connected or any IP that you have and just block that IP address from the single device so because this is on your local network it's gonna have that IP when a person connects through the network and you'll be able to block it so through the GitHub page and everything that we did before this, you're actually able to collect the IP of the person trying to break in, and all of that was just to detect if someone was trying to break in. So what we can then do with that is set up a script to make it so that we block that IP. Now the reason that I decided to go with the blinking LED script uh, just initially 
uh, is because when I uh, first went ahead and chose the option to create my own script, it asks for a specific path to wherever that script is. And unfortunately, it's bugged and it doesn't actually work. So instead, I used the uh, the simple uh, blink LED one, which is already assigned to a script, uh, and it has its own file that the GitHub was actually able to read and link to. So what I did was I edited that specific file. If you wanted to do something similar to this, you could just take uh, the simple um, like banning IP code and you can just make a Python script for that and put it inside of that uh, blink LED script file and that'll actually allow your Raspberry Pi <clears throat> to run uh, the actual script whenever it gets an incoming transmission and really all of everything that we did so far was just trying to detect that transmission and now you can actually go from there to start creating all sorts of different scripts and all sorts of different ideas to actually make a project where you can have this device actually um, help prevent hackers from breaking into your network say from this point where you have your script and you got every place where you can put uh, information into it and take the actual values of someone um, breaking into your computer now you can take that information and have this Raspberry Pi using a script that will actually work connect to your network and have it change settings and change uh, all sorts of things uh, on your network so that you can actually help prevent that attacker from breaking in and stealing any information. And that's why this thing is so cool is because the Raspberry Pi is a pretty cheap small little device that you can forget or you can forget about and just put in a corner of a room or something like that and you'll like you won't notice it when it's on your network but then if someone's trying to break in this is the first thing that they're gonna see and you'll be able to know when they're trying to break in uh, so that's the basic gist of the project I thought this was pretty cool and something that I wanted to show other people so that's why we have this YouTube video and uh, if you want more YouTube videos um, I think in the future I'll be making more